you're it's perp back with another video and finally the eternals have arrived this is a very controversial movie on a lot of the side a lot of things are going on with this movie as far as critics not really liking it it's sitting at like a 58 something percent at rotten tomatoes a lot of people are saying the critics are bullshit which come on man I want to kind of address that the elephant in the room real quick is the whole controversy behind this movie. Is this the case of, you know, the critics being wrong? And I will say straight up, I would say they're half right. I'm 50 50 with this movie. But before I get into this review, hit that like button, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at perp minded 420. So. In order to really talk about this movie, I have to kind of spoil some things. So if you don't want any spoilers, come back after you watch the movie. I would appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I will talk about those post credit scenes because there's two of them. One was okay. The other one was meh. I don't know where that's going to go. Maybe leading into the Eternals too. Whatever. Anyways, so to kind of uh, set this whole movie, we get the opening crawl, very Star Wars-esque, uh, describing like who the Eternals are, where they come from. They come from the Celestials. They were created by the Celestials to, you know, watch over human beings and stuff like that, and not to interfere with uh, humans, just only get involved when there's deviants. And... That's where some of my issue comes from with this movie. Um, there's a lot of themes on humanity and just should we care about these humans? Should we not? Because they're the Eternals are put in this predicament where, you know, they were they thought that they were put on this earth for one thing, but then it leads to another. And there's a lot of inconsistencies because like. Jon Snow's character, I think his name is like Dane or something like that. He asked, like, why didn't you get involved with Thanos? Uh, and that that whole that's a, a big kind of inconsistency for me. If somebody could explain it to me, because it still doesn't make sense, because I'm pretty sure Thanos is an eternal, but he has a deviant gene. So wouldn't that make him qualified to, you know, I don't know. I guess in the MCU, it doesn't really matter or it just works differently, whatever. Um, so, yeah, they pretty much show you the opening scene of, you know, the Eternals coming to Earth. They're getting busy. You pretty much show what each Eternal can do. I was okay. It was okay. It wasn't nothing too mind blowing. You know, some of the special effects are hit or miss for me. A lot of it looks uh, clean at times and other times it's like clearly a green screen right there or just some visual effects could have been touched up a little bit. Um, not a huge issue. I appreciate the violence in this movie, though. I think that's what's going to put it over for a lot of people that there are stakes in this movie. It's just kind of wishy washy at the point at, at, at this moment because we don't know certain fates of certain characters because they kind of left that up in the air. Um, the Eternals themselves, uh, I really don't like them. They, they, especially uh, what's his face with the Bollywood thing, whatever. I forget his name, but he was the most obnoxious Eternal out of them all. I feel like a lot of the Eternals were kind of just miscast or just misused at certain times. Like the the chick that's the speedster, she worked for the scenes that she were that she was in. Some other didn't work for me. You know, I really didn't like. I was her name um, Ajax character. I felt nothing for her character when she died. Um, it was fucked up how she died. You know, you, you kind of get this reveal of there's a secret villain. And that brings me into probably the best Eternal, I, I would say. And I feel like they should have kind of put more um, 
more of the spotlight on Icarus's character because I feel like Icarus out of all of the Eternals was the most fascinating and just the turn that he kind of takes in this movie that was kind of surprising um I'm curious to see where they're gonna take his character in the future because I think they could do a lot with him as uh individually outside of the Eternals Angelina Jolie as um Athena Athena whatever I could really care less like I said like they have their moments like as far as when they're doing their action scenes it's really cool but for the most part a lot of these Eternals are kind of useless like Cersei they really uh pound you over the head like yo her power kind of sucks but kind of really doesn't it's kind of useful but sometimes that it, it's it's more her, her kind of ability is more defense than offense. So the the way she becomes leader is just kind of weird and doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, I, I would have still preferred just Icarus to be the leader. And maybe that's what they're going to do in the future. Whatever. Fastos didn't really care for Michael Henry uh, Bryan's character, whatever is um, Paperboy. Didn't really care for his character. And that's the thing just about the Eternals as a whole. You know, it, it you can't really take them serious. Besides, like, a select few. But other than that, it just... They don't even take the Deviants serious at certain points. And there's another issue I have with this movie is the... Um, the way they set up their backstory, how they kind of tell their backstory through the uh, different periods of time that they were at and you know they kind of try to showcase how they split up and whatnot I, I think that could have been cut down I knew going into this this being like the second longest Marvel movie MCU movie we were going to get a lot of dialogue I was prepared for that but damn there was so much dialogue that I almost felt myself falling asleep at times i i think this is going to be one of the cases where a lot of people are going to cap for this movie because of the action i just don't think the eternals themselves are that interesting i don't think they did a, a well enough job of really connecting with these uh connecting these characters with the audience for me for me just me you know there are certain things in here i could see people liking you know, there are there are some edgy scenes like the gay kiss that seems to be the only thing that they really talked about the most about about this movie. As far as my knowledge, um, there is a slight sex scene, which I did not see coming from Marvel's perspective. So maybe they can go a little bit more adult and kind of, you know, um, be a little less kitty with a lot of these movies now i know one of the critics or a lot of the critics are saying that they should have stuck to the mcu formula i'd say this movie definitely does stick to the mcu formula but also kind of takes some liberties and kind of does something slightly different it's just nothing like wow that's like groundbreaking like this movie is nothing groundbreaking um I don't really know how this is going to tie into the X-Men. There's no really hints at that. As far as I know, I'm not like a comic book head like that. But th I thought that was kind of like a missed opportunity. Now, let's talk about these post credit scenes real quick and kind of give you my overall thoughts. And then, you know, I'm going to get y'all out of here. post credit scene, we get introduced to Harry Styles. I mean, uh, Thanos' brother. And I feel like this is going to be a very jokey character, but it seems like that's the type of character Thanos' brother is. He has some type of way of figuring out where the other Eternals are. And that's kind of interesting. You know, I'm somewhat interested to see what other Eternals are out there. Um, what's going to be the big main threat? Like, is it going to be... Um, Jon Snow's character in the future I don't know that's what it kind of seems like because that demon sword that was interesting I don't know who was talking to him uh because they didn't show his face let me know who you think it might be if you've seen the uh the post credit scene um really interesting stuff there like I said the first one with 
the introduction of Thanos' brother, I don't really care for. It was whatever. The second one was more interesting. Overall, I think this movie kind of feels pointless to me for right now. I, I want to see how this kind of fits into the bigger picture of things because like they do promote this as oh it's gonna change the mcu forever blah 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 i don't know but there is a huge like almost um celestial thing that's just sticking out of the earth you know um i don't know if they're gonna mention that in other mcu movies what's kang's playing play no mention of kang or anything yet in this movie understandable but i am curious to see what the fate of the other eternals are going to be for pretty much disobeying the celestials because that was their whole kind of uh reason of being on earth is to make sure uh you had enough energy to awake this celestial it was going to destroy all of earth so you know I'm curious to see how this is all going to kind of play into the bigger picture of things. Cause I think there's a lot of moving pieces going on in the MCU. Some fascinating, some is kind of like leaving me to scratch my head. Not really worried. Um, I don't think this movie is going to be for everybody. I hope I somewhat was able to break down my thoughts of this movie in the best way possible i wasn't trying to go through every single thing in this movie because it's a lot it's long if they were to cut like 25 minutes off of this movie i think it would have been a better experience it was just very long and it felt like a lot of scenes just dragged and it became very repetitive as far as just you know um hating humans or should we not hate humans should we protect them should we not protect them a lot of flip-floppiness and just I don't know with me like i said i don't like doing like uh ratings or you know gradings i just this is just my feelings of this movie will i watch this again unfortunately yes i have to watch this again this weekend maybe second viewing it would be better we'll have to see if you've seen this movie let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below until next time i'm out peace